Hello students and welcome to lecture 5 of unit 3. In this lecture we will discuss about what is magnetic susceptibility and how it is measured experimentally as well as through mathematical formulas. So what is magnetic susceptibility? The word susceptibility comes from the latest Latin word susceptibilis here which means receptive. In electromagnetism, we denote it by the letter chi. Suscep magnetic susceptibility is the measure of how much a material will become magnetized in an applied magnetic field. So, how much a material will be magnetized when you apply an external magnetic field that gives a measure of magnetic susceptibility. That means how receptive a material is towards external magnetic field. Mathematically, it is the ratio of magnetization which is defined as magnetic moment per unit volume. Okay, so the, it is the ratio of magnetization M to the applied magnetizing field, say H. Now, magnetic susceptibility is a quantitative measure. That means it can be calculated. To what extent? To which a material may be magnetized in relation to the given field. So, it is measured with respect to the applied magnetic field. Now this chi m is equal to m by h. This is volume recept susceptibility strictly speaking because the magnetization is what? It is magnetic moment per unit volume. It is measured uh, per unit volume. That's why chi m given here in this formula is strictly speaking a volume susceptibility. So this is uh, another way of defining magnetic susceptibility where chi is equal to m by h where chi is magnetic susceptibility, m is magnetization and h is the field intensity and that makes chi a dimensionless proportionality constant. Okay, So chi is actually a dimensionless, it has no dimension and it is a proportionality constant which indicates the degree of magnetization in response to an applied magnetic field. Let us see what causes magnetic susceptibility. Magnetic susceptibility is caused due to the interaction of electron and nuclei with the externally applied magnetic field. We all know the atoms are composed of electrons at the nucleus and the electrons present in those atoms they orient in a particular direction in presence of an applied magnetic field. So, this actually causes the magnetic susceptibility. Why is susceptibility needed or how is it helpful? Now, magnetic susceptibility is helpful because it classifies magnetic materials in two classes. That means, how a material behaves in an applied magnetic field can be divided into two classes based on how uh, based on the value of magnetic susceptibility for example when chi is greater than zero that means chi value is positive right chi value is positive we say the material is paramagnetic how do we come to such a conclusion that if chi or ma uh, magnetic susceptibility is positive the material is paramagnetic because the value of chi being positive means what it means that the magnetic field in the material is becoming stronger by the induced magnetization right so if the material in the material when the external magnetic field is applied if the magnetic field in the material is strengthened or it becomes more strong by induced magnetization then the value of chi is positive the other scenario can be chi is less than zero or chi is negative and such materials are called diamagnetism uh, diamagnetic. So, how do we come to that conclusion? It is because the magnetic field in the material is weakened by the induced magnetization. So, we already know that diamagnetic material in diamagnetic materials uh, on application of the external magnetic field, the alignment of electron is against the field. Right? Please go through that lecture once again to know how diamagnetic and paramagnetic materials behave in an applied external field to better understand the concept of magnetic susceptibility and how magnetic susceptibility is able to classify magnetic materials into two classes mostly paramagnetic and diamagnetic so for now we have to 
learned that when chi value is greater than zero, such materials, in such materials there is an alignment with the magnetic field and they are paramagnetic. And when chi value is less than zero, then in such materials the alignment is against the field because the magnetic field in the material is weakened or become less by induced magnetization and such materials are called diamagnetic. The other classes of magnetic materials like ferromagnetic, ferrimagnetic or antiferromagnetic materials have a permanent magnetization. Uh, we tried to see in our previous lecture that they do have a permanent magnetization even in absence of magnetic field and thus they do not have a well defined zero field susceptibility. That means even when the external field is zero there might be an induced uh, field in it and hence magnetic susceptibility is not well defined for such materials. Let us see how magnetic susceptibility is used in different fields. Since we have already said that it is a quantitative measure of magnetic susceptibility, that is why it, pro it can provide insight into the structure of materials. How it can provide uh, structure, insight into structure of materials because it gives a particular perspective of bonding and energy levels because it involves electrons and chemical substances we know have a specific bonding and energy level associated with them. So, quantitative measure of magnetic susceptibility give us an insight into how the materials are structured. Now, magnetic susceptibility is monitored on discrete sample during thermal demagnetization. This is an application of magnetic susceptibility to recognize change, changes in magnetic mineralogy. In magnetic mineralogy, what happens? Uh, this occurs due to phase transition or oxidation uh, when heated. And for such material, magnetic susceptibility can be monitored. Another application of magnetic susceptibility is that it is used in geology for paleomagnetic studies and structural geology. Since magneti magnetizability of materials come from atomic level magnetic properties of particles, that means the magnetic property of the atom of a particle of which a material is made. So, this is dominated by what? It is dominated by the magnetic moment of electrons and electrons are present in all materials, correct? But without an external field, the magnetic moment of electrons are either paired or they are random, thus making the magnetism actually zero uh, other than the case of ferromagnets. So, this provides a, a perspective or a new dimension to how the structure of materials or bonding or the application of magnetic susceptibility can be used in different fields. Now, experimentally, there have been a few techniques that have been in use to calculate volume magnetic susceptibility, which is measured by a force by the force change felt upon a substance when a magnetic field gradient is applied. The two most common methods are Goy balance and the Evans balance. The Goy method we will discuss in details, uh, but the Evans ba balance is an alternative method. Let us see what Goy balance is. In this Goy balance, balance, a sample is hung between two poles of an electromagnet and the change in weight when the electromagnet is turned on is proportional to susceptibility. So, the change in weight is measured when the electromagnet is turned on for a particular sample which is hung between the poles of electromagnet. This change in weight is said to be proportional to the magnetic susceptibility. Uh, for now, nowadays in today's research, several high-end measurements are used in which instead of an electromagnet, they use superconductive magnet. The other balance is Evans balance in which the force is measured on a strong compact magnet upon insertion of the sample. For liquid samples, the susceptibility is measured from the dependence of NMR frequency of the sample. So, what is the NMR frequency of the sample gives the susceptibility for liquid samples. Okay. The other method is uh, using MR scanner which gives highly accurate diamagnetic uh, which gives highly accurate value for diamagnetic material with susceptibility is very similar to that of water. Uh, the GUI method has been discussed a little bit here, but 
in in the notes that i have given it is explained in more details now the goy method uses a simple formula which comes from the lenz's law law the lenz's law was around since given around since 1834 and it is written in this particular form okay b by h is equal to 1 plus 4 pi l by 4 pi i by h okay so this is how it is given here we have introduced the value of kappa kappa is magnetic susceptibility per unit volume or i by h okay so experimentally we have already said it involves what it involves um, the force on the sample by the magnetic field and it is dependent on tendency of the sample to concentrate a magnetic field within itself and we are finally led to this particular formula um, where change of force is measured as df equal to mu not where mu not is permeability of vacuum h is the magnitude of magnetic field at point say dx here dv is the volume of the sample at point dx h we already know and kappa is the magnetic susceptibility per unit volume as we have defined here so this particular formula is used to calculate the force experimentally okay uh, so i have given a question sample example with the notes please try to follow it if you have any problem while solving it um, we shall discuss it in the live lecture okay so if you have any doubts don't forget to ping me i shall be available to answer your queries thank you